Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we have traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. Lyft is a, is a 501c3 non-for-profit. Uh, we're all about economic development. Our primary focus is to help small and mid-sized manufacturing companies here on Long Island. In the heydays um, of the Cold War, um, where we had the North, the, the Grummans of the world, the Fairchilds, the Sperrys, um, we had large prime countries, companies here on Long Island. We were building platforms on Long Island. You know, this is the home of the F-14, the E-2C, uh, the EA-6, the A-10. Uh, those days are gone. I mean, uh, most of the primes have left the island. There are now headquarters in other areas in the country. But what has survived here on Long Island are a lot of the very smart, entrepreneurial, spirited people who set up companies and were suppliers to the Drummonds of the world who have found their niche in the, in the industry for supplying product. We really concentrate on retaining and expanding the existing businesses within the region, and that's a core. Uh, over 75,000 people working in the manufacturing sector. We want to keep that vibrant and grow that. We have tremendous capability on Long Island. In addition to that, we have the capacity to expand our manufacturing throughput. So those two elements, I believe, produce a very fertile ground for manufacturing growth and expansion. We understand the supply chain and the availability of other company resources within the region that we can help connect entrepreneurs or other businesses to help them develop that partnership and, and, and the identification of viable resources for their business. So, you know, in that way, Lyft uh, very much uh, attempts to connect these resources together for the betterment of the company. This is the Applied Science Foundation. Homeland Security is a nonprofit. The key missions here is to enhance business development in that field. When we identify an issue for the fire department, for example, they need these blankets they throw over the windows in high rise fires. All right, we'll look at that, we'll conduct some research, and then we'll identify a company here on the island that may be able to make that, that uh, window blanket right? or a, a particular radio or a software program so that becomes manufactured. That enhances their business, maybe more jobs. But at the end run, the end user, the fire chief or police chief, gets more of a, uh, a bang for the buck and more of a safe operations. What is a 21st century emergency plan versus a 19th or even 20th century okay, plan? Okay, it's a plan that instead of leafing through a loose leaf notebook to look and see what you have, you can sit down at your computer screen and you can pull up all of the cameras that might be in play there. You can pull up the actual plan document itself to see what you're supposed to do in case there's a chemical spill in the building. It's it, the ability to share it with the first responders. The principal will have it in his office. The district superintendent can have it in his office. The first responders, as they pull up in the truck, the police can have it. So everybody can work together to get things done in a more orderly fashion. The threats are the same, it's how you react to them and the fact that data sharing among organizations is one of the most important things that we can do to help first respond. My uh, assignment is to uh, establish a composite center for Lyft. Uh, there's a huge amount, hundreds of companies that are, make, are making products in metals today, aluminum and steel, that over time, they'll still have aluminum and steel uh, businesses out there, but more and more products and more and more contracts will be looking for manufacturers who can work with composite. So we, we, we want to get ahead of the curve. We think we're at a good time for this industry. We're at the beginning of the growth spurt. Carbon uh, fiber is taking over a lot of the applications that aluminum and steel are used currently today but because of their properties both being very light and very strong, significantly stronger than aluminum and steel, there's great advantages uh, for, for products to use carbon fiber and fiberglass materials. 
my group is responsible for working with the 3,000 plus manufacturers here on Long Island uh, to help them improve their productivity, uh, train their employees, and to uh, ultimately uh, help them uh, grow their business. The biggest issue is typically how I can help lower my operating costs. I want to be more competitive in the marketplace. I need to get new clients. And how do I do that? Is there an issue of quality? Is there an issue of uh, not being able to penetrate certain markets because you don't have an, a qualified quality system? Or you, your people need to be trained in certain aspects of how they manufacture, uh, certification of the people, and so on and so forth. So those are the things that would allow a company to grow their business by having these, these, uh, these training programs in place. We would love to be uh, uh, an island where we're spinning off uh, many, many new businesses in the technology field that will create wealth, economic growth, and jobs within the region. So that's a, that's a core uh, thing that we are looking at to become part of the vibrancy of Long Island commercialization.